Hi, and welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Today, we're here to talk about Sprint 124 of Visual Studio Team Services. And to do that, I have my guest, Alex. Alex, why don't you introduce yourself? Thanks, Dimitri. My name is Alex Nichols. I'm a PM on the VSTS team. And I focus on the management of, of our releases, both for VSTS and also for TFS. Uh, we've got the hosted service and the on-prem product. And with that, uh, with our 42 feature teams out there, I really help to scale by focusing on things like release notes and also our customer feedback channels. Yeah, you're an important part of the jigsaw puzzle, right? You're making sure that this train is moving forward and actually reaching customers. And I often, you know, work with folks in your role behind the scenes. And man, you have a lot of work on you. Typically, <laughs> it's not it's not an easy job. It's not like you're like, oh, we're just pushing features. You actually got to organize this big motion of, of stuff to happen. So right. uh, kudos to what you do here. Um, so it's awesome to talk about uh, VSTS sprints today. I, I think one of the things that folks might not even realize about you know the fact that we have TFS in the cloud, it's something we keep talking about, but I find lots of customers don't realize that our you know, Team Foundation server, it's, it's up there. We're hosting it, we're running it, we're releasing to it all the time. Maybe you can talk a little bit about like wh what does VSTS mean for cloud customers and how they get features. Mm, right. Yeah, we often refer to it internally as as one product with two mm -hmm. names. Yeah. Because like you said, we're, we're deploying TFS internally and yeah. hosting it for, for customers. So uh, when we release to the service, uh, we we're actually deploying every day and sometimes even more frequently than that. Uh, but every three weeks, which is our sprint cadence, we bundle up the features, and that, that's what we call our Sprintly update. Right. And those are when features get released to customers. Yeah, and I think you guys found three weeks was kind of the ideal time. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like a natural, you didn't pick three weeks right away. <laughs> three right. weeks became a thing, and now every three weeks, customers get the benefit of features. But at the same time, we, we have this whole protocol around safety for customers, right? Trying not to impact them. Uh, with new capabilities, because e even That's with right. your best testing internally, you could push a feature out to the cloud, something can go wrong. It's not something they're choosing, so we, we have to take that on ourselves to do right. So I think, how, like you guys are a yeah. protocol, what's the protocol for that? Yeah, so we, we have the concept of ring deployment. So there's, there's ring zero through ring four, mm -hmm. and every day we're deploying to those rings and there's some delay between. So we, we make sure that a ring deployment went well, all right, looks good, some big time, and then it goes to the next ring. So we have that, we have those stop gaps in place. Okay, awesome. So um, another thing to mention is that everything we push to the cloud winds up on-premises eventually. F everything that makes sense, right. right, so to speak, right? Certain right. things are cloud only, but uh, TFS gets updates. So that's a bundling of features we've already shipped and tested in the cloud, right? So that's kind of the, it starts with right. uh, VSTS and it moves to TFS. But back in the, in the original release, I mean, it was the one way, <laughs> you know, we, we took TFS, we put it in the cloud, and now it's kind of going backwards. It's, it's right. cool to think about. Yeah. Um, the, the thing that we have to talk about today specifically is we wanted to bring attention to the Sprint 124 release. Mm. So maybe you can uh, show people the release notes and how we communicate what's changed to customers. Right, right. So, so in Sprint 124 update, our, our headliner is the, the updated experience for search. But we've also got a number of features across code and work, build a release to, to really round it out. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty typical where we've got, got features across across the product. Yeah, and sometimes this release nodes can be very large, sometimes it can be smaller, whatever right. whatever made it into that sprint as a quality check and, and a gate that you guys have internally gets out to customers. And it's worth saying that we publish these release nodes when we start the first ring, right? So the moment at least one customer could be impacted, we, we put it up as a public thing. Right. But People should know, like they might go to release notes, they might see a feature, go into their VSTS instance, and it's not there. And that's because of the ring thing you talked about. Right. right? Yeah, we, we want to go on the side of having those early customers be prepared yeah. with what's coming coming at them. So yeah, we, we want to target getting this content out pretty cool. fresh. And also we we have sometimes um, you know non non fully production features that go out to customers, right? Things that we have in preview, but we feel comfortable enough that either customers can opt into them or sometimes just we make them available if we feel they're good enough. But everything's in release notes. There's nothing that people have to worry that, you know, they're going to get a feature. I mean, we do our best, right, in the sense. Right. This is the complete list of everything that's shipped to customers. Right. And over right. the rings, it gets out there to them. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. Right. Awesome. All right. So we, we have a bunch of features to talk about today specifically, and we wanted to start with search. So uh, why don't you tell people what, what search is? Because you know, it's great to, to see something shipped for search, but maybe you never even used search or realized it is there for you. In the right. Product. Right. Yeah. Ser search is pretty powerful. and and. Uh, for VSTS, it's searching both for code and for work items. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about preview features before. This latest feature that we've released is really just an updated experience, but it brings a lot of a lot of benefits that, that we've seen. And, and talking to the PM for this for this one, there's been a ton of feedback on the old experience that mm -hmm. that really helped shape this one. 
so for search, uh, this is really about going in and uh, maybe you're in code and you're, you're browsing through and you want to do something like look for a class even. Mm -hmm. We have some context menu that you can jump in from the, from the code page and, and jump straight into search and see where else that class might be used or its, its definition or its references. Right. So, so it's that, more than just search. It actually gives you some context to run. You know, I mean, it doesn't work for every single possible language, but we keep expanding that list and it works for certain languages that we understand internally so we can give you much more context around the files you find in right. the class. That's right. So, so I want to want to jump into talk, talk talk show some of what I'm talking about here. Yeah. And, and with code, I'm bring, bringing up the code code view here, and I click click the search box, and you'll notice first we get a, a whole bunch of filters, and mm -hmm. there's even more than what's shown here. But you can you can really get get it to finding exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. So I might find something that uh, let's look for. Uh, JSON files. Yeah, the, so, the so JSON that's like the hints, right? So giving you right. hints of things you can type. Once you memorize them, you don't need to even look at the list. You can just be extension JSON, hit enter. Right. You get your list, and this is giving you the real links to real files. You get your source code on the right. You get your history, compare. It's, it's really the full experience you get if you've manually found that file. That's right. That's right. Cool. Yeah, so this is this is an example where I'm searching for code, and and you'll notice with this latest experience, the the functionality is more or less the same as, as what we had before. But with this, we're really bringing consistency and and streamlining it across across the product here with a consistent filter uh, filter set here that we'll mm -hmm. see, where we can search within within a repo, uh, one or more within one or more branches mm -hmm. now. Uh, specify a path or, or a new thing called called code type that we're showing there. You, know, you can switch on what what sort sort you want to use for the results or switch the view. So th these are these are controls here that we've we've really streamlined to help help bring the focus to the results and help you find what you're looking for faster. Yeah, I mean it, it's great when you get six results and sometimes we know we, we might get a hundred thousand results. I mean search is search. It's whatever how narrow you want it to be, and the more narrow you can get sometimes on on the repo or on the branch or even just sorting sometimes can save you. So definitely worth pointing out, hey, there's changes over there and it seems like you can go very specific if you need it to find. Right. So I'm looking for maybe a specific file here. Mm -hmm. And I'd even do this myself as I'm looking for uh, looking for maybe to route some work items that to the right team that maybe not be routed to the right place. Right. I might look for this manifest JSON file and I see it in code here, but I can also switch over to work items and see are there any work items that, that are also referencing this? That's and awesome. here I found another one. So I can see both both of those and in, in just with the flip of a flip of a panel here. Yeah, yeah, that, that's very powerful. I mean, the, what, that's one of the advantages of VSTS when you have your code and your work items in the same place. We we don't force you to. You don't have to. You can just use us as a dumb Git repo, or you can use some other Git repo and use us just for work items. But when that's you right. have it here, it's that kind of level of integration. That's right. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I think one of the demos that. I still love to do is going all the way out to the builds and everything. Showing everything is linked to, to the work and item. And you yeah. can see how the full life cycle. Right. But that's for a different episode. Yeah. <laughs> all right, awesome. Cool. So people can basically get to this experience. Like that's one of the things I, I like to show. Like how, how would you get here? If you just landed on, on the dashboard, how would you get into this view that you just you just demoed for folks? Um, is right. it through the code tab or right. If we if we go really it's persistent across across the entire product. We've mm -hmm. got this search Mm -hmm. Search control up here on the right, and you can you can specify the context that you like to do. You mm -hmm. want to search for code, you want to search for work items. You'll notice though that if you're on the code tab, mm -hmm. we we assume that you're searching for code, so we'll yeah. we'll default the context there. If you're on work, we'll we'll assume you're searching for work items. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, all right. For the next feature that we wanted to talk about was the wikis. Awesome. So the wikis is something that I'm I'm quite familiar with. I I use it a lot. In fact, I'm using it right now to do some planning work. Um, it, it's a great way to store uh, some additional metadata along with your projects, right? Mm -hmm. So you might have code, you might have work, but you often need that level of like just documentation or references or some kind of plan that's more just like generic and to be outlined. And the beautiful thing with our wiki is we've got this great interface in there to, you know, create the wiki. It's easy. You don't have to like create files and edit the files. You just say, I want to go in the wiki. I want to add a page. I want to link the pages together. I want to mm -hmm. structure them. And then it's marked down or HTML or some combination of, and I'm usually combining the two, especially for tables and stuff. Right. You know, that makes it easier. Right. Um, but it's very, very clean. And now we, we have the side by side editors and we're shipping all, all sorts of new features. So maybe you can talk through some of the new capabilities there. Right. Yeah, yeah. Wiki keeps getting better and better. And we, we yeah. like having this concept of, 
of your, your wiki pages and your, that content right next to your, your in, inside of your engineering system, right yeah. next to your code and, sure. and your work. And, and particularly with this one, uh, a, a handful of, of improvements here. So I'll jump in and first one is, is just make it, make it easy to save and keep editing, right? So, so I've got a page here, I'm open. I'll, I'll go into edit mode and I'll say, uh, another line here and I can just do a, a control S to save it, yeah. very simply. Right? Small change, but makes productivity <laughs> still right. better. Right. Because I, I may want to keep editing. And in this case, I want to say we've also added the ability to, as in elsewhere in the product, uh, link directly to a work item. So I'll go just pound three. That's a work item ID, mm -hmm. and I can it'll give me some suggestions. And I'll go go link in that work item. You can see the preview right over there live that it, it's showing that that bug number three. Yeah. Yeah. That that feature I really like, and the fact that it it shows you the you know. Keep other other things. So if you start typing in a number, it gives you narrow narrow search of the of the work item ID. Sometimes it's easier just to click on the one you found. If you know the ID, which often you do if you're a real developer working on this, it's really easy to add it, and it lets you build something that's just contextual to that wiki page. Again, the, the you know this this goes to like the, your work item shouldn't be the place you dump everything. Right. Right. And I've I've right. been guilty of that in the past as a developer. Mm. You open that work item, you're like, oh my god, there's like a wiki inside the the text box, right? But right. this lets you create the the context page for whatever scenario you have. And on the, if you open up navigation, if you kind of click on that right with says pages, mm -hmm. it, is, it is something that you can, you can structure. So right here, we only have one page, but if you added more, right. what I love is you can actually drag them so they're like, there's a hierarchy. Home can have a bunch off of it, and something else can have a bunch off. They can have expanders. Just makes it easy, and you never have to change actual edit files. This is all up in, you know, for the web editor. So that's kind of cool. Right, right. And, and the other beautiful thing is it's, it's it's just a, a repo behind the scenes. Yeah. So you can do all of that advan advanced stuff too if, if you really yeah. want to. Yeah, we, we try not to hide anything from you. Right. Yeah, and, and associated with that, another feature that the team did release here is, is if you really go, go into Wiki and you, you, you want to make that the, the content on your home, home page of your project, mm -hmm. you can even switch that out. So a lot of projects have the README. We've added that, that option to have the Wiki, Wiki home page. Uh, right there on your project homepage. Cool. So when you when you land on that homepage for your project, it's up to you what what's there for your team, and if the wiki page is what's the most relevant from the homepage, you can do that. That's right. Cool. And you've got the uh, other widgets over there on the right, so it kind of plays plays a role within the page, but doesn't take it over completely. You can still have right. your widgets, I guess. Is right. what I'm trying to say. Right. Cool. All right. So that's an awesome feature. Um, any other capabilities there? And I think we have another video people can go watch, right? So uh, Donovan Brown did a toolbox video with Sandeep on it, that's which right. they went deeper on the wiki. I know there's more to come. Uh, the story keeps evolving, but folks should definitely check out the video, and I'll link it in the, in the show notes for yeah, folks to take a look. All right. So the next feature here that we have as part of the, the three that we're demoing is uh, something to, to integrate with Azure Key Vault. So for mm. those folks that don't know, um, Azure Key Vault's a, a part of Azure, one of the capabilities of Azure. And this is designed to create a really secure and safe place for customers to store secrets. And the secret list, I mean, I have it here just so I wouldn't forget, are just some really good examples of authentication keys, storage account keys, data encryption, PSX files, passwords anything that shouldn't be in the code, mm -hmm. right? Because you, you want your code to have code and you're built to execute at some point to build that code and to only then pull in the secrets from some secure, secure location, right? You don't, want, you don't want the code to ever have, you know, like the, all the stories that keep coming out. Oh, if you search, you know, code for this thing, you'll find right. it in open source projects. I mean, it's an ongoing battle of like secrets need to be separate. And every developer has probably made this mistake at some point. Um, Azure Key Vault, the central service, lets you do that. And, and as part of ESTS, we're constantly looking for ways not only to integrate customers in, into our ecosystem or extensions, but just integrate better with our own products. And that's one of the value adds we hope we add. So Azure Key Vault being part of Microsoft, we've, we've added um, even more support for VSTS. So what do we do in this that's release? Right. Yeah, that, that's right. So, so in this particular release, we're bringing the Azure Key Vault integration into the, into the build. Uh, build definition. Yep. So it's been it's been in release for a bit, right? Very much more connected up into Azure, but now we're bringing that into into build if you need in case you need it there. Yeah. Right. So so I'll just I'll hop over to there and where you, where you really get started under build and release. It's in, it's in the library screen. Mm -hmm. So in here we have we have the ability to to define a, a variable group. So we start that and these these are. These are variables that we want to be able to use across multiple definitions. Right. So that reuse is important. And mm -hmm. things like secrets uh, fall into that category. So yeah. we, we've got this ability here to, to switch to say, okay, I've got a new variable group for, the, for my secrets here, and I'm going to link that to Azure Key Vault. 
This is where you can connect up to the Azure subscription that you've integrated with for, for your account, mm -hmm. and then also specify the, the particular name of the key vault that you're going to hook up to. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. It just makes it very reusable within the product. And uh, you know, again, we're, we're constantly looking for feedback. If folks find that this is not sufficient in some way, let us know. We, we want to hear, and we can make it even better for you. Right, so, so if I jump in and look at what, what would a build definition look like, I, I can jump into one here and see, see the variables. Mm -hmm. And I can see the variable groups that, that are linked here. I've got one, and, and I've specified a secret in my key vault called mm -hmm. secret one. And it, it's masked there. But, but uh, I'll show how, how you can use this in, in your build definition here. I've just, I've just got a simple PowerShell script task where I've linked in that, that secret one right. in here, and I want to output it, right? So I ran a build earlier, and uh, you'll notice in the steps of the build there was a downloaded secret. So it mm -hmm. went out to Key Vault, grabbed this from the from the secret, yeah. secret secret store, and grabbed uh, grabbed and tried to uh, output this 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 secret. So I've got a secret here, and you'll see that the PowerShell script ran, and it's got that mass mass secret in there. Right. So right. you could use it. You could use it. This is just a, a demonstration of where you can grab it in, but. But uh, you can use it in one of the one of your key tasks, like what you were saying. If you want to connect up to uh, connect up to a, a store your store your files or your, your publish artifacts or something into a secret place uh, or a secure place, you can do that with this. Awesome. All right. Well, we've got a lot of great uh, features being released, and you know these uh, these videos. Whenever we will talk about any sort of sprint releases, they'll be as big as necessary. Uh, sometimes they'll be much longer, and in this case, we we think this this does justice to it. Now, again, all the release notes are up there from all the previous releases. Um, many times people say, oh, I didn't know this was there. We can usually point to some release note that talked about it. We, of course, have documentation. Release notes are mm. not the only place. Right. But you know, there used to be a time in Microsoft, you had to dig through blog posts to find out what we ship for our products. We, yes, gil guilty as charged, we used to do that. But we've gotten anything much better. The release notes here are awesome. We have release notes for VS Code. We have Visual Studio release notes, TFS, and VSTS, Visual Studio Team Services. So everything's up there on our site. And uh, we hope uh, folks uh, get benefit from it. So. I think we'll wrap it up. All right. Thanks All for right. having me. All right. Thank you very much for watching Visual Studio Toolbox, and uh, we hope you come back for the next episode. Thank you for your time.